In-depth sports coverage from The Athletic is now just £1 a month with an introductory offer. See the link in the description to sign up. The Ajax team of 1994-95 is rightly considered to be one of the greatest ever. Winning the Eredivisie title without losing a single game, they also won the Champions League without dropping a game and defeated Gremio to take the Intercontinental Cup. In fact, they only lost once all season, a cup tie quarter final against Feyenoord after extra time. No other side in history has won the Champions League while also going unbeaten to win their domestic title. And their manager was Louis van Gaal. Van Gaal was a systems-orientated coach who believed in rehearsed movements, specific responses to situations. Wingers could take on one opponent by dribbling, for example, but if faced by two would have to pass in field, and who used data and opposition analysis heavily well before it was the norm. Van Gaal was a product of the Dutch school of total football, begun by Rinus Michels and refined by Johan Cruyff. The key tenet of the philosophy was to control space to make the pitch big in attack, with width and positional interchanges, and small in defence, with a high line, pressing and vertical compactness. Van Gaal took a less individualistic approach to this though, privileging team cohesion over star players, and building his Ajax team mostly from youth products. The average age of the starting 11 who won the Champions League final was 24.7, with only two starters over 25. Both substitutes were 18. He used a 3-4-3, which was instituted when Cruyff pushed a defender into midfield to create a diamond shape. Now, this was partly because most Eredivisie sides used two attackers, so three defenders still had an advantage, and because goalkeepers could be the spare man with the ball at their feet, with passing ability prized almost above goalkeeping fundamentals. Ajax's wide defenders, who were technically centre-backs in a back three but played effectively like full-backs, often stayed quite wide. Generally, Frank de Boer played on the left but tucked in a bit, while Michael Reziger was extremely fast and would press higher on the right. Danny Blint, one of the team's veterans at 31, was generally the central centre-back, and the three were protected by the deepest midfielder, mostly Frank Rijgaard, another of the older players who had rejoined the club after a very successful spell at AC Milan. These two would read the game, and once in possession, Rijgaard would often drop off and he and Blint would bring the ball up while the fullbacks offered width. The diamond formation allowed for numerical superiority in midfield, as the two flanking midfielders stayed relatively central. They would act as pressers, but also were there to show as passing options for the wide attackers or the pivot, Rijgaard. Van Gaal placed heavy emphasis on retention of possession, and the two central midfielders, usually 21-year-old Edgar Davids and 18-year-old Clarence Seydorf, were crucial for this as their energy not only won back the ball, but their positional intelligence and constant movement meant Ajax could keep it with ease. Width and attack came from the wide players of the front three. Mark Overmars was the star winger on the left, with Finidi George often used on the right. Their job was to stretch opposition fullbacks out, creating space centrally before getting in across. And while Ajax would progress the ball ably through midfield, the wingers would often be hit with long diagonal passes from Blint, Rijgaard or the fullbacks too. Van Gaal was not afraid to go long if his wingers were able to isolate weaker players and drive past them. The creation of space centrally was also achieved by the centre forward, usually Patrick Kluivert, or the highly versatile Ronald de Boer who occupied the centre backs, pushing them back. That left space for the tip of the midfield diamond, the 10, the creative hub of the team, who also crucially set the tone for the team's press. The 10 was also expected to advance up to support the striker. Dennis Bergkamp's use in this role, before he left in 1993, led to the coining of the term shadow striker, as his exploitation of space and his late arrivals into the box made him hard to mark. In the 94-95 team, this role was usually played by Yari Lipmanen, technically superb and hard-working, or the equally gifted Nwankwo Kanu. The midfielders would also join in, but what was noticeable was that players tended not to overlap. The fullbacks would stay behind the wingers, and the flanking midfielders would push wide but not overlap, allowing for the recycling of possession and switches of play, but meaning that the wingers always had room to run into. In the league, and against weaker teams in European competition, Ajax would really compress the space, with the fullbacks defending beyond the halfway line at times. Shielded by the positional acumen of Blint and Rijgaard, and the excellence of Edwin van der Sar, a genuine sweeper-keeper. 
Against the bigger teams in Europe, Van Gaal was not afraid to drop his deepest midfielder even deeper and rely on the industry of Davids and Seydorf to maintain midfield superiority. The lack of overlaps also maintained the solidity, and while Ajax were not a team of superstars in the way that Cruyff's Barcelona were, the discipline of the defence in midfield facilitated the match winners, Kluivert, Lippmannen and the wingers. While Ajax retained the league the very next year, they would lose the Champions League final to another Italian team, Juventus, on penalties. Van Gaal went on to see success with Barcelona, AZ Alkmaar and Bayern Munich, while many members of the team went on to achieve honours at other clubs as the squad was gradually broken up. But in that 1994-95 season, Van Gaal and his young side were the best team in the world playing a brilliant, intelligent brand of the game which remains strongly influential to this day. The Athletic is in-depth sports coverage that helps fans see the game from every angle. And Tifo is delighted to be able to offer full access to The Athletic now for just £1 per month. See the link in the description for details of this introductory offer. For football fans, that's access to the writing of journalists dedicated to your team, plus David Ornstein, Phil Hay, Daniel Taylor and many more. Not to mention over 400 full-time writers offering inside access and independent analysis of every team that you follow across every league that you care about. Get local expertise and unmatched league-wide perspective. The Athletics writers are in the bubble, on the field and behind the scenes as it all happens. Catch up, go deep and join the conversation on the most important happenings in sports.